Okay, we need to talk about China because their economy is holding on by a thread right now and it changed very quickly. And the implication of their economy not getting back on track will have a global impact. Now, I'm a very visual learner, so I made a flow chart to kind of explain what's happening, so let's take a look. So this all centers around a company called Evergrande in China. They are the largest real estate developer group in China. Now, China's real estate market is really interesting because it is actually appreciating way more than even the US. As a matter of fact, people were freaking out so much that the real estate market was increasing that they were dumping their life savings into property just to be able to buy a house and own a piece of property in China. It got so out of hand that Evergrande started offering pre-sales, which, which literally meant that you would buy the house before it was even built. You would be making mortgage payments on a house that didn't even exist. But hey, if it got you in the market, it was worth it. It kind of felt like that here in the US. We probably weren't far off from doing something like this. But anyway, now you have thousands of homes that are in this pre-sale status and Evergrande is on cloud nine because they're making money from stuff that doesn't even exist yet. And what they ended up doing was taking the money from these pre-sales and using it to sell more pre-sale homes, not to actually build the pre-sale homes. So months go by and people aren't even worried because housing prices are going up, Evergrande is doing really well selling all these pre-sales, but then it comes time where homes should start being completed. And the home buyers are getting a little suspicious that it's been six, seven, eight months and their home hasn't even been started or there's any communication that it's gonna be done on time. So then what happens is the actual contract deadline comes in and Evergrande is unable to meet that deadline and people are still without their homes. So naturally, people freak out and they actually sign a huge petition to say we are no longer going to pay our mortgage. Our house doesn't even exist, you can't expect us to pay for that house. Now this happened back in June and Evergrande was like, okay, yeah, what, 300 people aren't gonna pay their mortgages, ooh, big deal, we're so scared. But over time, that mortgage boycott has spread and spread and spread. And right now there's about $58 billion in loans that Evergrande potentially cannot pay back. So if we go back to the flow chart, we are now looking at Evergrande potentially going bankrupt. So you might be thinking, well, okay, not a big deal. Some real estate builder is going bankrupt. But the problem is, is there's $58 billion worth of loans tied to this company. That company can't just go away because then we're losing $58 billion worth of money, worth of projects, worth of capital. Now that's significant in and of itself, but there's more. Let's go back to the flow chart and look at something else that's happening in China right now. So about the same time that people start defaulting on their mortgages or rather refusing to pay them, there turns out to be a huge bank scandal. This ended up affecting about 4,000 rural banks, but there was fraud that was happening within the bank itself. They were taking money from loans and using it for themselves, just a whole lot of sketchy stuff. So while they're doing this investigation on where this money's going, how it's being being used, they ended up freezing people's deposits. So if you were to go to the bank and say, hey, I wanna draw out my money, you couldn't. On top of that, the Chinese government said they wouldn't insure any money that was lost due to fraud. Here in the US, we have FDIC, which protects you up to $250,000. If your money disappears, the government will insure that and give you up to $250,000 back. So that gives us peace of mind that we can put our money in the bank and it'll be safe. But when the Chinese government says, well, sorry, it was fraud, we're not gonna insure it, that causes everybody to freak out about how safe their money actually is in the bank. And so what does that cause? you get a run on the banks, which is what happened in the Great Depression in the US in the 1930s. Now, worst case scenario, when something like this happens, the bank can go back to everybody that it's loaned money to and said, hey, we want all of that money back. Now, if you get to that point, that's already, that's already bad enough if the bank's trying to collect on all of these loans that it's already sent out. But here's the bigger problem. You have $58 billion tied up in a company that's going bankrupt. They're not gonna be able to pay that money back. You also have a bunch of homeowners that have mortgages on homes that don't even exist and are refusing to pay those loans too. So what happens when all of this stuff starts coming together, you get a giant 
implosion. I would say boom, but in economics that means something totally different. You basically get a collapse. China's entire financial well-being is holding on by a thread right now. And the government's trying everything they can do to lessen some of the fears in the market, understandably. But the only thing that's doing is by not being transparent, it's creating more trust issues. So this is a really big deal. This, this is not something that's just going to be contained within China. China's the second largest global economy. If Evergrande goes down, there are so many businesses that rely on Evergrande's business. Evergrande also has, I think they have like a an electric car company. They have a football team. And so when you think of, you know, everybody that's employed and all of the uh, they've also had like offshore investments and there's just so many pieces that this company touches that when that goes down, plus China's economy, it's going to have a global effect. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on this. And I think you should too, because when it comes down to even just the housing market here in the U.S., this could end up having a direct effect on house prices, which would be really fascinating if that does happen. Maybe not in a good way, but still fascinating. So I hope this was interesting. I hope this added some value. And if it did, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time.